Well, good evening and welcome to St. Paul's. It's so lovely to see you all here this evening and welcome as well if you're watching online. It's good to have you join us as well from wherever you are at whatever point in time. My name's David. I'm one of the team here. David, we had a half marathon this morning. Were you running in it? Uh, no, I had to come here to work. Was so that your excuse? It felt like a marathon here. No, it was just a terrible <laughs> joke. It wasn't that bad. It was a great morning. All good. <laughs> we had a lot of people running in it. Yeah, apparently. I saw some guys when I first got here this morning. They were gathering and then off they went, I guess, to Lammas or wherever it started. Started in Lammas. See, I knew that. I should do it, shouldn't I? At least I know where it starts. Yeah, you could do it, except you're a, youth, a worship pastor here, so I think you ought to be here Yes. for the service. Well, John could lead worship on the day next year. Well, John, you could do the half marathon, and David could run. You'd like... Oh. No, and then you lead worship? Yeah, I'll lead worship. All right. <laughs> Have you ever run the half marathon? Uh, not for a long time. I haven't actually run a half marathon. I've, I've done 12 miles, but that's about okay. it. So I think that's nearly it, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Isn't it half of 26? 13. <laughs> it's, the, it's the last mile that would kill me. Yes, I've done it on my bicycle. On your bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot easier right here. Anyway, stop messing around. This is what it says in Psalm 145. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get un angry and filled with unfading love. The Lord is good to everyone and he showers compassion on all his creation. All your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, we come and gather before you because you rule throughout all generations. And it is in your nature to be kind and compassionate and tender towards your people. And Lord, thank you that you are a God who is forgiving and kind and compassionate to each one of us. And therefore we ask, Lord, that you would take our hearts now and draw them to you. You would take our mouths now and enable us to praise you. And you would take our eyes, Lord, and help us to look heavenward, to take our eyes off the things that trouble us most, and to gaze on your glory. Lord, we want to give you this hour or so together. Help us, Lord, to draw close to you, for we know in James you promise that if we draw close to you, you will draw close to us. So come now by your spirit and lead us <coughs> in worship, Lord.
science follow the sound of your voice and as you speak a hundred billion creatures catch your breath evolving in pursuit of what you say if it all so So if the mountains bow in reverence, so if the oceans draw your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. And if the wind goes where you send it, so.
reminded ourselves of that great promise that if we draw close to you, you come to us. So Lord, now, in this moment, maybe even just put a hand on your own heart and say, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord. Lord, our prayer is more. More of you. More of what you want to do in us.
you're carrying something this evening that you need to let go of. Maybe something that's burning you up inside. There was a word before the service of somebody trying to get rid of like a, a bitterness in their soul, but, but the Lord says that his love is sweet. Receive his sweetness. carrying a hurt, receive his gentleness tonight, his compassion and mercy and kindness. Allow the arms of the Father to wrap you up. Yeah, I really sense as well that um, just as we sung these words, we still and know that this weekend we've been surrounded by cars blaring their horns and trying to fill up. And we know that the true place of filling up is from you, the world that never runs dry. And in this space tonight, this oasis tonight, we just pray for more of your spirit to fill us up as we go out into this week. That in this moment, to be still and know that you are God, you are the eternal well of life. So hold us, Lord. Hold us as we go through all the rest of that we, that we have planned this evening. And we pray, Lord, that our ears would be attentive to your gentle whisper. Our hearts would be soft to what you want to say to us. Speak this evening, Lord, for your servants. We're listening. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat. Yeah, um, we would love to do testimonies um, uh, at some point this evening. So if you have a testimony, maybe you just be conscious of the fact that we're going to ask, and we would love to hear from you a bit later on if that's at all possible. A um, couple of things that we're highlighting. I'm going to start with Hungry, which is happening on Tuesday night here in church, in person. Uh, there was one in June, but this is the first time I feel like that we're going ahead in person for Hungry um, this Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Hungry, for those of you that don't know, is a space that we carve out during the week once a month on the fourth Tuesdays, um, 8 till 9.30 p.m. to so just uh, come and be together in the presence of God, more sung worship and prayer, uh, prophetic prayer and prayer ministry. So it really is a time to continue to draw from that well that we were just praying about just now. And you know, um, something else that's starting um, is Alpha. Alpha is an amazing opportunity to explore what it means to be a Christian or to refresh our faith. Um, often it's, um, if we've been walking with God for a while, just to have a refresher course and remind ourselves of what is at the heart of what we believe. And you know, the Christian faith is, is a very simple message. Jesus came with a radical but simple message. I mean, it, it is a radical message. You know, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. I, I mean, that's pretty powerful. We, we haven't quite got that, have we? He says, do not judge others and you'll not be judged. The world hasn't quite got that. Most of his sayings and teaching are so simple. And Alpha allows us to explore what is at the heart of what we believe. There are some invite cards on the welcome desk as you come in. Please pick one of those up as you go out if you'd like to know more, an opportunity to sign up but also to be able to give to somebody else and invite them to come along and be part of the Alpha course. So do consider doing that or invite someone else along to do that with you. Also coming up this week, well, it's a busy week, isn't it, Mark, actually? Lots of things going on. Uh, we have a men's night, Calling All Men, 
uh, this Thursday evening from 7 till 9, 9.30, uh, depending. Uh, the men are uh, uh, coming together and having a briar South African barbecue. Um, there's going to What's be the difference between a South African barbecue and an English barbecue? Is this a joke? I can't tell if you're about to set me up. <laughs> um, I think it is. I think it's the the powder, the like the bry powder they put on. That's all I can tell the difference. Is it? But is there is there a punchline? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I'm just I'm just right. I'm just inquiring. Um, why it's South African and not English? I think probably Oscar Carsagan. It's just a, it's being cooked by a South African. Cooked by a South African. So, so the that chicken, makes it a the bry. chicken tastes better. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's a good that's, enough reason why it should all be there. <laughs> men on Thursday from 7 till 9, sign up online and uh, just so they know how many people to expect on Thursday night. Sounds good. Oh, there might be cars there, but not too sure. That took you a long time to do that message. Oh. Awaken is happening on Saturday 9th of October. That's for all the women. If you uh, would love to come and meet with other women in the church uh, over a breakfast, it's happening on the 9th of October. Uh, at 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock here. It's a wonderful opportunity to gather together. So um, do consider signing up for that. Um, again, you can, you can sign up online. Just go to the website and there's an opportunity to sign up for that. Um, and actually Lucy Radcliffe, who is speaking this evening, is going to be speaking about that, of her journey in faith, which sounds like it would be an amazing thing to bring friends to. So do consider bringing a friend along. But sign up because breakfast is served, so we need to know numbers for that. Lovely. So I'll, I'll, I'll take, take on the testimony time. You are. And then we have a, and then we'll have a, a moment to meet a new person to St. Paul's in a moment. So has anyone got um, a story of God at work in their lives, maybe this week, maybe over the summer, a story that you'd love to share very briefly this evening with us together? That's okay. <laughs> Hi there. Um, would you like to tell us your name and then just tell us your story? Yes. Hi, I'm Black. Oh, this is very bright. And uh, yeah, I, I don't worship at this church, but I worship at another church. And we found a family of God across, so that's really exciting. But uh, just something which, uh, which happened today. I visited this church a couple of weeks back when your wonderful youth worker, not youth worker, lady who works with the children, was asking for volunteers for her work and she showed us this obscene number to me, 20 plus or someone she was looking for. Now I also work with children at a church, much smaller obviously because I didn't need 20 plus, I needed just a couple to, to help. But today we had a very exciting time because we had massive open air worship uh, with, with churches across sites and all I wanted to say that we are working really hard to be prepared for this event as youth workers and children's workers. You know, planning is everything, isn't it? So we planned, and for best of plans, we turned up this morning uh, and we expected about maybe 20 to 30 children and there were 90. And so, you know, best of plans went totally out of the window. We had as chaotic time as possible. Literally none of us knew what we were doing at all, apart from God. So I just wanted to share the fact that for the best of plans you might have, and whether you feel prepared or not, that God might throw all sorts at you. And, but he knows, and he's in control. So I just wanted to... Thank you so much for a lovely story of God's blessing. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share a story this evening, however small or big it may be, just as powerful? Nope. Okay, I'll hand back over to Mark. Elias, will you come and join me? It's lovely to have you here. So, Elias, we're, have I got that pronunciation right? Correct. Yes? That's correct. That's correct, okay. <laughs> Elias... Um, you come from where? I'm from Germany. You're from Germany, yeah. and um, we've been looking forward to your arrival here for a very long time. I can't remember when you first applied, but you've come to do what? What have you come here to do? I do a uh, do I, yeah, so discipleship, yeah. 
So you've come to do the discipleship yeah. year. Tell us about the church that you come from in Germany. It's a small church, but we are like growing right now. And we got, I guess, 150 to 200 members. And right now we are like building a new house because we are like growing, growing. This Christmas we had around 600 to 700 visitors. So some people even sit right in front of the entrance and only hear what was in the in a yeah, service, but not haven't seen anything. So you've been part of a church in Germany that has been growing. Yeah. What made you decide to come over here and give a year of your life to serving in a church in the UK? I guess I I would like to see other churches and maybe to learn from like other Christian all around the world and then use what I learned in my church to yeah, teach others. So yeah, give the experience to another. And, and what were you serving in, in your church at home? What were you involved in? Uh, mostly in the worship band, in our youth and also in the services. But I also worked with teenagers and um, a youth group, yeah. Well, so a fairly broad yeah. ministry. And you've come here to do much the same. Yeah. So you're gonna be working with the children and the youth and the worship. I hope so. <laughs> you hope so? Yeah. You haven't heard if, about if the worship yet. We're just waiting to hear from David and John, are we? Okay, they're, they're desperate to sign you up. So I'm sure you'll be there in the next couple of days. But it, it is so great to have you and um, it's quite a big step, isn't it? You come from Germany on your own for a year away. And um, I don't know about you, but if I were doing that, I'd want friends and I'd want places to go. And I would particularly want places to feed me as well if I went there. So <laughs> um, uh, w would you like that? Would you love people to invite you for dinner and get to know you so that you can get to know more of the church family here? Yes, of course. Yes, then of course. I thought you might I, say that. I need that. to cook less. So <laughs> it's good for me. <laughs> so we, we, we've been praying. When did you first apply? Can you remember? I guess like half a year ago. Maybe. Six months ago. Yeah. Six months ago. So it, we've been going through that process. And the visa was the big yeah. hold up and something to do yeah. with the pandemic and whether we were able to come to the country. Um, and it's really great to have you here. And we as a church family, we'd love to pray for you and pray God's support and blessing upon you. David, come and pray with me, will you? We'd love to pray for God's blessing and grace upon you for this year. Father, thank you for Elias. Thank you that he has experienced something of your grace in that home church in Germany. And that your spirit has spoken to him to give him a passion and desire to grow to know more of you. To come to serve you. And what a lovely heart to come and learn that he may take back and serve, sharing something of the goodness of God. Lord, what an honor and privilege for us as a church family to have him here. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us as we welcome him well, as we look after him in this year, as we encourage him in his faith, as we walk with him in his discipleship. Lord, that he may hear you and grow ever nearer to you throughout this year. And we pray it in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Elias. It's really great to have you here. Let's give him a welcome. Okay, we are going to have Lucy is going to come and speak to us. Lucy, come. Have you got a microphone on? Yeah, well, we're going to, you can, you can have, well, I thought he was going to throw it then. We're going to hold that. Let me just pray for you. Lucy, not everybody will know you. You're, you're here. How long have you been here? Um, just over a year now. Just over a year. Yeah. And you've spoken here once before, haven't yeah. you, in the evening? Yeah, once before. 
And your husband's also involved. Yes, my husband's Tim, if any of you have met Tim. Your husband Tim is the curate here at the moment and it's really great to have you here and thank you for being willing as well. And what we love is that Tim comes with his ministry but you do as well. And um, thank you for sharing that with us this evening. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for Lucy. Thank you for what you have done in her life so far and what you are doing in her life. Thank you, Lord, for what you are calling them to in the long run. Lord, how honored we are to have them here for these few years while they share ministry with us. And Lord, Father, we pray, bless Lucy as she speaks to us and encourages us in our walk with you this evening. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. I'm really actually quite excited to speak to you tonight. I, um, I always get really nervous, so bear with me. But I'm so happy that we have a word of God that is God-breathed, and he reveals new things to us all the time. Am I really loud? I feel really loud. A bit loud. Take me down. <laughs> you like the quiet, don't you? <laughs> So I'm just going to begin by reading our passage tonight. You might be familiar with it, but I love how God is always just tuning in our ears again to something new. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Just be with us as we read it tonight. May our ears be attentive. May our hearts receive what you have for us tonight. We thank you that you love to breathe on us through your word. May I only speak what you want me to speak, Jesus. Amen. So we come into Matthew 14, and we come in at verse 13, and it's where Jesus feeds the 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns, and when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass taking the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people, and they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children, as well as women and children. How many of you have heard this passage before? I've heard it many times. Um, but I want to begin with a question for you. Have you ever had a season where you feel at the end of yourself? Maybe it's grief or overwhelm. Maybe it's loss or exhaustion or weariness. Or maybe you're unsure of your future. I want to begin by just sharing a story of my own. It's when I was young. I lived opposite my nan. We grew up on a council estate in Cambridge, and I absolutely loved living opposite my nan. She was the best nan I could ever have wanted. And I used to, with my sister, run over to her house. She'd bake loads of cakes, and we had a great time. And um, my mum and dad were trying to buy our council house, and unfortunately, they couldn't keep making the payments. And we actually had to leave our family home and put, we were put into temporary accommodation across the other side of town, and it wasn't easy. It was actually incredibly difficult to watch my parents have that level, and all of us have that level of instability and that sense of loss and be somewhere completely unfamiliar. And for my mum and dad to journey poverty and debt and home life was incredibly stressful. But my mum was an absolute prayer warrior and still is. And I'm going to share around this story tonight with the story of Jesus, of how she journeyed coming to the end of herself, and she just prayed. 
And she prayed and she prayed, and we were placed actually in a flat above a chip shop and a little um, uh, news agent at the time. Don't get those many much anymore, do you? <laughs> and, um, and it wasn't ideal, but it was a better fit. We were nearer our school, we were a little bit closer to my nan. Um, but my mum kept praying for God to just do something else. And she put a little note in the um, shop downstairs um, asking if anyone wanted to do a council house exchange. She was completely at the end of herself. And she couldn't fix it, but she knew she could pray. And I wonder tonight if any of us have ever felt that way, that we just can't fix our situation. Maybe it's not the same as my situation was in that moment. But we all have a story and we all have something that perhaps we feel at the end of ourselves with. Maybe you've moved cities, maybe your life feels absolutely overwhelming. Maybe your work is difficult or relationships are difficult. Maybe your health is suffering or someone you really care about is suffering in some way, either physically, mentally or emotionally. Or maybe, like Jesus, you're facing loss or grief tonight, and you are seeking solitude. You see, aside from this major miracle of feeding the 5,000, as well as the other healings that Jesus just casually mentions in this passage, I want to speak tonight on another quiet, undercurrent miracle that's going on. It's interwoven into the very being of Jesus our Lord. It's this, this quiet, undercurrent miracle of abiding, which I find incredibly hard to master. But tonight we're going to look at how Jesus demonstrates it to us. You see, Jesus, his disciples, we all experience times when we're just at the end of ourselves. But the other miracle is on offer, to abide. Let God unfold the possible in the impossibilities. So we pick up the passage in verse 13. When Jesus heard this, he withdrew privately by boat to a solitary place. And why is he withdrawing? I've never noticed this. I look back at the previous passage and you can see that Jesus has just found out that one of his really close relatives, John the Baptist, has just been killed in a really brutal way. It is an unnecessary death. It is cruel. Their mothers were cousins. John the Baptist was there from the start of Jesus' life. He's a forerunner to his ministry. He paved the way for Jesus in so many ways. And in Luke 1, verse 41, it shows us that the Holy Spirit was at work even between them as John leapt within his mother's womb at encountering Jesus in utero. They were connected. And at the start of this major miracle story, Jesus is actually in a place of loss, and he's seeking solitude. He's at the end of himself, and humanly, he would have had all the emotions. Yes, he was God, but he came to be fully man. He would have had sadness and grief and questions and needing space, and so much wouldn't have made sense to him. He was God but became fully man. But yet he is able to abide and step into the miraculous, even at the end of himself. In verse 14, when Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd, and he had compassion, and he healed their sick. He steps out in compassion. He steps out to heal. He doesn't wait until he's in a place of strength and power, feeling personally powerful. He's making the impossible possible by leaning into God. He's abiding. Abiding means to remain or continue in. It's a state of being. It's not a state of striving. And I remember when I was a bit younger, I went to the color conference and I heard this lady called Priscilla Shira speak on God margin. And she spoke about how when we're at the very end of ourselves and we need to just be somewhere else, we need to be further away from where we are in terms of just being able to step into something that feels impossible, that that is where God loves to just rush in. And as a family, we recently got three little hamsters, which Elias came and met the other day. (laughs) Sort of inflicted on you, weren't they? By my son. But I love these hamsters. And one of the things I was thinking of when I was um, reading this, reading my notes again, 
was how these hamsters just keep going. They just keep walking and stepping, and you just have to keep your hands keep moving to try and catch them. And they literally don't mind if nothing's in front of them. They'll find a way to step into something. And I just feel there's something of God in that for us tonight, that you don't step into an empty void. You step into your Father's hand. You step into his footstep. He is your shepherd, and you step with him. He goes before you. And the disciples in verse 18 are in problem-solving mode. I don't know about you, but I am very good at doing problem-solving mode. And they don't know what to do with their lack. They bring to Jesus these fish and these loaves, and they're overwhelmed by the need. But Jesus isn't flustered. He's just totally calm. He's like, you know, okay, here's what we have. And on one of my slides, I think, Jonathan, I don't know if you've got the next one there. I just wanted to show you. Uh, oh, we've done that one already. But just what Jesus does, he just does three very simple things. He, he fixes his eyes on his father. He surrenders what he has, even the lack. And he steps into the miracle. But he doesn't just step into it himself. He invites the disciples in with him. He invites us into the miracle. And how does he do it? What can we do? What do you do? What do I do when we just need that space? Do we retreat to God or do we retreat to Netflix? Dare I say Netflix? (laughs) Or just, I don't know, what's your thing that you run to? Do you run to the Father? Do you step into him? Do you lean hard on him? He can take it. Just going back to my story, um, because I haven't told you the ending So this is a a miracle for my family's life. You will have your own stories and miracles. I believe that for you if you haven't received it yet. It's it's on the horizon in faith in Jesus' name. And one of our miracles was that the day after my mum put that little ad in the newsagents, a lady rang us from across the street. And we didn't know she was across the street. She told us she was across the street because she was so excited. And she said, oh, I've got a little girl. And we we, we go to the school that you live opposite. And we want to swap our house with you, our three-bedroom house for your flat. Now, if that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. Because she was blessed by our flat. She wanted our flat. And we needed some space. And my mum had a garden. And she loves gardening. And she created this beautiful garden. And this home became where I lived for the rest of my late teens. But one of the most beautiful things for me was that when I cycled home from school every day, most days, there was this most beautiful sunset that would set over our estate. There were these gorgeous golden hues, this beautiful reminder that God was faithful and he came through. But it's not easy to sit in that margin where you're at the end of yourself. It's not an easy space to be in. It's not comfortable. We wait uncertainly, and eventually we watch God unfold a miracle. Well, we learn to abide in him and learn that he is a trustworthy God. So I have an invitation for you tonight. I think it's... You know, you may be saying you're tired and you're weary, you're overwhelmed. But he's saying his grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in your weakness. And will you trust him tonight like those little hamsters? Just keep stepping in. Will you lean on the God who loves you? And he loves to step in when you're at the end of yourself. He loves it when you lean into him and let him hold you, hold your hand and guide you through. And will you choose to retreat to him? Let him work this quiet undercurrent miracle of abiding in him today, showing that he has power in your weakness. Joining me, David. Yeah, should we stand if we're able, just as we come into this time together? Just 
this moment between us and God in this space. In this peace as we wait on God to do what God does, which is meet with us. for some of us here uh, that image of the hamster wheel um, is our lives we just keep going keep going keep going as Lucy said actually each step is um, into a place that our other has for us but we, we don't even realise that we're going so fast our, our lives are just treadmills or hamster wheels it's easy for us to do that when life is busy and we have plans and we make plans we make more plans especially going into this new season where we're all starting up again and that beautiful reminder that the father is waiting at each step however fast we're trying to go Maybe we need to reorientate ourselves this evening to that. Thank you. I think there's some people here tonight who just have had so much trust broken. They've just, they don't know if they want to trust God with this stuff. They're overwhelmed. Maybe they're disappointed. And I just want to pray for that, Lord. Will you just meet that person now? Will you reveal that you are trustworthy, that you are good, that you are kind? you are loving, that you are faithful. Will you give them courage by your spirit, just as Jesus had courage in his spirit, and he had peace in his circumstance. Lord, give them peace as they step into you. Take them on that journey of really of your knowing who you are, discovering that you are good. get a real sense that there's some people here tonight that could do with some prayer ministry in a good old-fashioned sense if you feel comfortable with that and um, we'd really love to pray with you um as in lay on the hands etc um so if, if that's you do come forward to the front to the side maybe um and we have some people here at the front that would love to pray for you more thing before we step into another song is in that sense of abiding I think it's really powerful and it may be for some of us here this evening that we need to move back into that sense of knowing God's presence in the everyday just abiding in each moment with God nothing dramatic spectacular but just in the tomorrow morning and I just pray for you this evening that 
this moment is a start, a restart, a reset into the sense of abiding. If you'd like to come for ministry at the front, um, just so you know, obviously we live stream this service, but uh, we won't be filming you <laughs> in, in ministry, obviously. Um, it's a private thing and we keep it that way. Uh, so just to reassure you of that as we go into our final song. God of miracles. Thank you that even when you, Lord Jesus, were in a place of grief, you had time for others and you offered healing to others. 
And Lord, we give you our weeks this week. And we ask that whatever happens this week, that you would be in this week with us. And that if we find ourselves at the end of ourselves, Lord, we find you there. And you will give for us, Lord, all the strength and help we need for this week. Amen. David, why don't you pray for us? Amen. Yeah, Father God, we just uh, ask your blessing on us as we go out into this week. We thank you for how you've spoken and moved in this place this evening. And we pray that we'll, we'll take that, we'll carry that into this week in all that you have planned, as you go a step ahead of us. Amen. Amen. Well, there's refreshments out the back. Refreshments. There's, if you're new, there's then... There's a basket on the way out. There's a basket for giving, if that's what you'd like to do. And there's a welcome pack if you're new or visiting. And all you'd love things. to meet anybody new, wouldn't you? I would love to meet anyone new. Come and say hello. Um, Great. Yeah. So come say hello to us that's at the back. Good. There's an opportunity to have some refreshments from the kitchen and uh, a basket for giving on the way out. Thank you for being here Thank this you. evening, friends. God bless. Take care.